The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. At the trading post in Selkirk, Pete Carruthers sat in a corner trying on mucklucks while Francois, the proprietor, carried on his usual patter of local gossip. So now we get bank here in Selkirk, you say. <laughs> That'd be a good thing, bank. Many bad men come to North not for prospecting in ground, but in people's pockets. Oh, Francois, you're always suspecting the worst in people. Most of them are pretty honest, I find. Oh, you, Pete, you trust everyone. Never have I seen such a man as you. You have good heart, but you are a bad businessman. <laughs> Maybe it's because I haven't too much to lose. I can't complain, though. My claim is paying off, and I have quite a bit saved. You give away more than you save. Yeah. How do you like them boots? These fit all right. I'll put the other one on. Hello, Francois. Oh, hello, Pete. Hi there, Jake. Hello, Jake. You want something? Well, I need some flour and tobacco. Uh, I hate to ask you, Francois, but I need a little more credit. Jake, me, I am generous man, I think. Yeah. But three times now I give you credit when a long time ago I should stop. This time... I must say no. Well, Francois, I'll pay you as soon as I get some money. What's wrong, Jake? You broke? Oh, I had some tough luck. Give him what he wants, Francois. Put it on my account. But Pete... Gee, is... thanks, Pete. You're sure a good fella. That's all right, Jake. Well, all right. I get it for you. Say, I just saw Red Davis and Lucky Darrell in the cafe before I come in here. They said they were going over to your house to see you. Say, I'm glad you reminded me of that. They said they'd be over today, and I clean forgot about it. Uh, here you are, Jake. Uh... Well, thanks, Francois. Don't thank me. If I had to say so, you would not get this flour and tobacco. Never mind, Francois. Jake will pay me back. You're darn tootin', I will. Well, so long, Pete. You should not give your money to Jake. He is no good. Well, maybe he's just having a little hard luck. Never have I seen such a man as you. How many men have you grub stake? <laughs> not too many. But you never can tell. If they hit pay dirt, half of it will be mine. But some of them you hardly know. They have to file their claims here, don't they? When I have papers to show I grub stake them, I'm entitled to get half. Well, <laughs> maybe I am wrong. Maybe the world, she needs more men like you. You are a trusting man, but I would not say a wise one. <laughs> I'll take these mucklucks, Francois. I guess I'd better wear them. I'm in a hurry. I have to get back to my cabin to meet Red Davis and Lucky Darrell. Oh, hello, Pete. Hello, Pete. Hi there, Red and Lucky. I've been waiting for you. Come on in. Uh, we wanted to talk to you about grub staking us, Pete. Oh, well, that's it. You wouldn't be taking much of a chance this time, Pete. I got a good tip from this friend of mine who just made a big strike. There's plenty of gold up there where he is, and if we can get enough supplies together, we'll have a fortune in no time. Oh, good. Oh, I'm sorry Jane and my young son aren't here. I'd like to have you meet him. Uh, make yourselves at home, boys. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Nice cabin you have here. Uh-huh. Uh, Jane would like it better if we were a little closer to town. You uh, said you had a son, too, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy's nine years old. Now, how much do you boys figure you'll need? Well, uh, you grub stake people before, haven't you? Yeah. Well, let's see. Well, well, I can give you exact figures if you want to see them. Keep all my papers here in this tin box. Blank forms here we can use. Uh, here we are. I can't let you have as much as I gave Slim Jackson. My savings are getting low. But I feel this is a good investment. How about 300? Well, that ought to be enough. Yeah, yeah, we could make it on that, I think. All right, boys. I'm going to take a chance on you. Hey, yeah. There's $300 in gold. Now, you sign this paper. It's a pencil. Oh, sure. I fill in the money here, don't I? That's right. I guess we really ought to have a witness, but I trust you, boys. Yeah. Now you sign it, Lucky. Uh, sure. There you are. Maybe we'll all be rich someday. Well, 
Come on, Lucky. Thanks a lot, Pete. We'll be seeing you as soon as we hit pay dirt and come back here to file a claim. Yeah, I guess your wife and son are coming now, Pete. I see a boy and a woman coming up the trail. Stay and meet him, why don't you? We'll meet him when we have some good news for him. Come on, Red. Uh, goodbye, Pete. Goodbye. Good luck. Well, we did it. If that claim is as rich as I think it's going to be, he's made a good investment. He's not a very good businessman. Why? What do you mean? He didn't have any witnesses there. Nobody saw us get that money. No, but he's got our signature. If that claim is as rich as you think it's going to be, it might be a good idea to get that paper some way. If he couldn't produce the paper, he'd have a hard time proving he grub picked us. Uh-huh. That tin box wouldn't be hard to open. Well, let's not count our chickens. There'll be plenty of time to decide what to do after we get paid, or if we do. Quiet. Here's his wife and kid. What's he carrying? Oh, he looks like a pup. Howdy, ma'am. Hello there. You just came out of our cabin, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. We've been to see your father. I'm going to surprise him. So look what I have. <laughs> well, he's a fine pup. Now, don't you bother these men, Jimmy. They're probably in a hurry. Well, I can't wait till Dad sees Mabel. Uh, he'll like him, all right. Come on, my girl. I don't see why you want to call that dog Mabel. Oh, I like that name, and, and Mabel likes it, too. He knows it already. Oh, all right, Jimmy. Then Mabel it is. Here's our house, Mabel. Now, go on in and meet Dad. <laughs> now, Dad, what do you think it is? A cow? That's a strange-looking animal. Oh, I never saw such big feet. It is an odd-looking pup. Zeke Smith gave it to Jimmy. I guess maybe there's every kind of a dog you could think of mixed up in him. But, but I think he's beautiful. <laughs> Mabel and I are going to be the best friends in the world. <laughs> As Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police drove his dog team along the trail bordering the river near Selkirk, he heard a child's voice calling frantically. Come on, Mabel. Jump. Jump quick. What? Come on, Mabel. 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 Come on,
the appearance of the men had changed. Lucky Darrell had grown a thick beard that covered his face like a mask, while Red had shaved his beard off completely. Red was cooking their supper as he talked to Lucky. We'll stay here for a few days till we find out what's happening in town. Now, you better go into cell cook tomorrow. I'm afraid somebody might recognize me and start asking questions. Nobody will know you with that beard. You didn't have one before. They'll probably recognize me, though, on account of my red hair. I think we're taking a big chance doing this. We're not taking a chance at all. If we can find out when nobody's going to be at Peach Cabin, we can get into that tin box in two minutes. Red, uh, why don't we give him half the claim? After all, he did grub stake us, and legally it's his. Now, don't start that again. Do you realize if we give him half of it, that means we'll just get a fourth apiece? But it's a rich claim. There'll be enough for all of us. It's too rich to give away if we don't have to. Now, nobody witnessed it when we signed that paper. If we can get our hands on it, we'll deny that Pete ever grubstaked us. And he'll have nothing to prove that he did. Now, we're going to get that paper. But don't forget we have to file a claim. We'll file it after we get the paper that proves Pete owns half of it. Now, tomorrow morning, you go into town and see what's happening. Maybe they'll be having a party or something that Pete might want to attend. The following morning, Sergeant Preston stopped his dog team before the Carruthers' cabin. Young Jimmy was out in front playing with his pup. Looking. Oh, Hello, Sergeant Preston. Quiet, Mabel. Don't you recognize King? How are you, Jimmy? Thought I'd stop and see how you are after you dip in the river. And uh, how's Mabel? Oh, we're both fine. It didn't hurt Mabel a bit. Good. Well, look at him. I think he knows King. He's trying to show off in front of him. Mabel's trying to impress King, all right. Wants to play with him. Oh, uh, you're going to the big show in town tonight. Sure. Pop and Mama taking me. I never saw a magician before. They say he takes things out of hats and makes things disappear and everything. I guess just about everyone in town will be there. Quite a treat for the people to have some entertainment. Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, hello, Preston. Hello, Pete. Something wrong? What's wrong, Pop? It's your dog again. I can't find one of my new mucklucks. He must have buried us somewhere. I, uh, I think this is the first time I ever saw you mad, Pete. I am mad, and this is the last straw. I told you, Jimmy, that if he hid one more thing of mine, that you'd have to get rid of that dog. Oh, Pop, no. I could brain that fool animal. I just bought that pair of boots a few weeks ago. Look at him, leaping around, showing off in front of King. King saved his life, and, and Mabel remembers him. You'd have hung your boots up on a nail or something. I'm through running our house to suit Mabel. Hanging everything up beyond uh, reach. Pete, look. Mabel just dug something out of the snow. Why, look, Pop. It, it looks like your boots. Mabel wants to play tug of war with King. <laughs> oh, my new mucklock. Now bring that here, you little scalawag. Jimmy, catch him. Mabel. Come here, Mabel. Give that to me. Mabel's a lively pup, all right. Jimmy's got to get rid of that silly dog. I won't have him around anymore. Well, Jimmy's pretty fond of him. Of course, most dogs do that when they're little. Why don't you give Mabel one more chance? Here's the blue pop. It isn't hurt a bit. Now, you give that dog a good hard whipping. But, but I can't whip him for digging up the boot. It was burying it that was bad, oh. wasn't it, Sergeant? Uh, Jimmy's right, Pete. If Mabel is rewarded for digging up the boot, maybe he'll find some of the other things he's buried. You're a good dog, Mabel. Good old fella. You'd better show him the boot and pet him, Pete. Well, this beats everything. Having to pet him when I want to kick him in the slack. <laughs> well, if I get back some of my mittens and things. Come here, Mabel. Good dog. You dug up this boot. I could kick all your teeth in, but you're a very good dog. He's proud of himself. Look at him wiggle. Well, guess I'll run along. See you tonight, please. Jimmy says you're all going to see the magician. Yeah. Maybe I can make a deal with that magician to come out here and make Mabel disappear. <laughs> go, go on, King. Bye-bye. So All right, on. Sergeant. Later that night, Red and Lucky walked quietly toward Pete's cabin. A light snow was falling. Are you sure nobody in town recognized you today? Not a soul. <laughs> This beard makes me look like everybody else who wears one. And we'll go back to camp tonight after we get that paper. Then tomorrow we'll come into town and pretend we just got here and file the claim. You, uh, sure Pete won't be home tonight? I told you everybody in the place is going to see that magician. There's never any entertainment up here. Nobody would miss it. Right, here's Pete's cabin. There's a dim light burning in it. Nobody's home or it'd be brighter. There's just enough light for me to find that little tin box. Think I ought to stay out here and watch? Yeah. 
Yeah, this snow is a good piece of luck. We'll cover our tracks. I'll leave the cabin door open. If you hear anyone coming along the trail, whistle. All right, but hurry. There's a lot of people use this trail. Hey, you quiet. Hey, quiet, I said. Hey, quit jumping on me. Friendly little cuss, are you? Down, I say. I don't want to play with you. Go away. Here's the tin box. This light is so dim. Hey, go away. Go on, go on. Now, ah, here's the one I'm looking for. Now, put the box back and Pete will never know it's been moved. Now, hey, where's my mitten? Did you find it here? I thought you were keeping watch. Nobody's coming. Did you get the paper? Yeah, I got it here somewhere. Now, where in that stick and... What's wrong? around the box and put it in my mitten on the floor beside me. Now the mitten is gone. Gone? Oh, you're crazy. It's so dark in here. You Maybe I kicked it accidentally. It must be here somewhere. I don't see it anyplace. Couldn't have walked away all by itself. Where? Hey, that pup. I bet he took it. Did you see him? No, but the door was open and he's black. Come on. Hey, he must be out here somewhere. There he is in the snow. Come back here, you black mongrel. You're scaring him. He's running. Now get him. Hey, don't shoot that gun. Somebody will hear it. Now, where's that dog? It's so dark, I don't see him anymore. You probably scared him so by shooting at him that he's still running. We'll never find him without a lantern. I don't see why you had to stick that paper in your mitten. Yeah, it might have blown away if I'd have put it on the floor. I certainly thought the mitten was safe enough. That ornery little cur. I should have brained him. Hey, Red, uh, maybe we can find a lantern in the house and trail him. Hey, listen. Sounds like a dog team coming. we got to get out of here. Maybe we can come back when it's light. It's a cinch. Pete won't be able to find the paper anyway. Come on. I'll come back early tomorrow before anyone's up. Maybe I can find it. About an hour after daybreak the following morning, Red looked up from the campfire at which he was cooking breakfast as Lucky approached. You back already? Did you find the mitten? Snowed last night, you know that. There weren't any tracks. I looked all over. I was there at Pete's cabin before anyone was awake. But it must have been around somewhere. That pup couldn't have eaten it. The snow covered all his tracks. He probably dragged the mitten off into the woods somewhere. You didn't leave any fresh tracks around in the snow yourself, did you? I think I'm crazy, Red. I could see from the trail that all the tracks around the cabin were covered. Well, I guess we're safe enough. If we can't find that mitten, I'm sure Pete won't be able to. Especially when he doesn't even know the paper's missing out of his tin box. And when he does miss it... He won't go looking for it in a strange mitten that his pup dragged off into the woods. What are you planning to do, Red? We'll do just what we plan to do. Go in and file this claim under our names. If Pete puts up a squawk, we just don't know what he's talking about. We'll wait until noon today and then go in and get a room at the hotel. And pretend we just mushed in from the north. <laughs> That night in the Silver Slipper Cafe, everyone was helping to celebrate the new strike made by Red and Lucky. As Pete Carruthers walked in the door, he was met by Jake. Oh, there, Pete. Hey, I've been lucky tonight. I'm going to pay you back for the money you let me have in Francois's place the other day. Oh, now, Jake, let it go till tomorrow. Well, I better take it now while I got it. All right. There you are. Thanks, Jake. Say, I suppose you heard about the strike that Red and Lucky made. Right. No, I didn't even know they were back. Well, they come back and file their claim today. They're over at the bar now. There they are. wonder why they didn't tell me about it. I'd better see them. Set them up again, Barney. Oh, Pete. Hello, Pete. Come on, name your boys. Yeah, Lucky and Red just made a strike. They're going to be rich. Hello, Pete. Hello, boys. Why didn't you tell me the good news? Oh, you didn't happen to be around, that's all. Well, I should think you'd have found me. After all, half your claim is mine. Half yours? What, what do you mean? <laughs> What's he talking about? Well, you boys know I grub staked you. That entitles me to half the claim. Oh, gosh, Pete. You've grub staked so many people, I guess you just get everything mixed up. But you signed the paper. It's at home. Did you have any witnesses to prove we did this little deal you're dreaming of? Why, well, you know, I trusted you. You signed that paper. Wait, you got a little mixed up, Pete. You get that paper, and maybe we'll remember. <laughs> hey, come on, boys. Let's have another drink. Right on. <laughs> the following morning, Sergeant Preston looked gravely at the tin box opened on the table in Pete's cabin. You'd better tell me everything that happened, Pete. Now, are you sure you had the paper that proved you grub-staked Lucky and Red? Sure I had it. Right here in this tin box. Mm. 
You say you had no witnesses here when you signed the paper? No, I didn't. Just Red and Lucky were here. Well, there isn't anything you can do about it legally without that paper. Did Red and Lucky know where you kept it? Sure they did. They saw me put it away. Oh, I'm afraid you're too trusting, Pete. You mean you think they stole it? It's possible, but there isn't any way we can prove it. But they didn't get into town until yesterday. Hmm, that's how it looks. Now, come on, let's go outside. They may have left some tracks around. I doubt it, though, after that snow last night. Here, Mabel, Mabel, Mabel. Jimmy, there's no use looking for that pup anymore. Has Mabel disappeared? Yes, thank goodness. He wasn't in the house when he got back from the show the other night. Yes, somebody picked him up. Good riddance, I say. Sergeant Preston, you haven't seen anything of Mabel, have you? Why, no, I haven't, Jimmy. He's been gone since the night before last. Jimmy, stop bothering the sergeant. He's got more important things to look for than that fool animal. Oh, but King could find him. He knows Mabel's name, don't you, King? I'll help you look for Mabel later, Jimmy. Right now, we're looking for some strange tracks. You better circle the cabin, Pete. Could I borrow King while you're looking? Or, or do you need him? Why, I don't need King right now. He doesn't know what I'm looking for. Go with Jimmy, King. Will you tell him to find Mabel, Sergeant? Find Mabel, boy. Where's Mabel? Come on, King. Find Mabel. We'll circle the cabin, too. Well, Pete, I guess there's no use. Nothing to show that anybody's been near your place. Yes, you're right, Sergeant. That's what I get for trusting too many people. Maybe you put that paper someplace else. Are you sure it was in that tin box? Dad, what ails that fool kid? What's wrong, Jimmy? Oh, come on, Pete. Maybe the pup was caught in a trap. Come on, son. I was hoping he'd never find that fool dog. Hurry. King must have heard Mabel or smelled him or something. Mabel is down in a big hole. Too deep for me. I can't get him. Mabel's still alive? Yes, but he's pretty weak. He can't seem to make much noise. How could he fall down a hole? Here he is. Well, poor little fella. Here, Jimmy. Take my hand. I'll lower you down in the hole and pull you and Mabel up. Uh, easy now. Don't worry, Mabel. I'm Just like that fool dog, not to look where he's going. Poor Mabel. Come on, boy. Say, Dad, here's one of your mittens. He's down here beside Mabel. I suppose. He was running away with it, I'll bet. I ended up here, Jimmy. There you are, thief. Now maybe you'll be glad we found Mabel. You'll have another pair of mittens. Ah. All right, Jim, take my hand. I'll pull you up. Well, there you are. Wouldn't you know it. That dog has stolen at least a half dozen of my mittens. And the one I find with him isn't even mine. Mabel isn't hurt or anything. He'll be all right, Jim. Oh, well, this mitten fits me. I'll... Hey, what's this? It's a paper. It was inside the mitten. Well, for the love... Well, what is it, please? It's the grub steak paper. What? Oh, how is Did it Mabel do something awful bad, Dad? Not this time, Jim. We don't know yet how Mabel did it, but it looks as though we helped your dad find a fortune. But... That dog couldn't get in the tin box? No, but he was probably standing beside the man who did. Well, can you beat that? Uh, uh, Jimmy, uh, you better take Mabel right home and feed him and take care of him. I'll wrap him in a blanket and give him part of that venison in the storehouse. <laughs> and some hot canned milk. What? Oh, oh, sure, sure, Dad. Gee, thanks, Sergeant, for lending me king. I never could have found Mabel without him. That's all right, Jimmy. Give me that mitten, Pete. King and I are going to town to find the owner of it. Come on, King. <laughs> The desk clerk at the Northern Hotel smiled as Sergeant Preston and his big dog, King, approached him in the lobby. Hello, Sergeant. Hi. Fine, Bill. I'd like some information. Anything you want, Sergeant. Are Red Davis and Lucky Darrell registered here? Yes, they're here. They're in room uh, 22. Huh? Ain't in now, though. Saw me about an hour ago. <laughs> they're celebrating the big strike they made. Would you mind letting me have a look at their room? Well, I've got the key right here. Sure. Now, come on, I'll take you back. Thanks, Bill. Anything wrong, Sergeant? I don't know yet, but I think we'll soon find out. Well, it's a little irregular letting anyone in their room like this, but <laughs> Mounties are different. It won't take long. I'm trying to find the mate to uh, this mitten. Yeah, here's the room. Come in with me, Bill. If I find that mitten, I'd like you to be a witness. Yeah, sure, I'd be glad to. Come on, King. Well, you don't have to look far. Isn't this it here on the bed? Uh, it looks like the mate, all right. Of course, there are hundreds of mittens like this up here. It's a regular kind you get the trading post. Francois has hundreds of them. I have another way of checking whether the mitten I have belongs to the same man that one does. You keep that mitten, Bill. King and I are going to wait in the lobby until Lucky and Red get back. There they are now, Sergeant. 
going back to the room. I don't want him to think I'm interested. Keep talking to me till they cross the lobby and started down the hall. What are you going to do? I'm going to give King the scent of this mitten that we found near Pete's cabin and tell him to search. If the mitten belongs to Lucky or Red, King will pick up the scent right here in the lobby. It's good and fresh and he can't miss it. If he follows him, it'll be a double check. They've gone down the hall. Here, King. The smitten. Find him, fella. Come on, King. I'll lead you past the door. Does he know what you want him to do? Yes, he knows. This took a lot of training. Search, boy. Find him. He's picked up the scent. He's following Red and Lucky. Come on. This is all I needed. Oh, uh, you got that mitten we found in their room? Yep, I've got it. Hey, King is standing right at their door. Who is it? It's Sergeant Preston, Red. Open this door. Hello, Sergeant. Hi, Bill. What's wrong? Good work, King. What's the matter? What's wrong with that dog? He's trying to find the owner of this mitten. He seems to think it's yours, Red. Why, why, no, that's not mine. I never saw it before. King knows it's yours. And I searched your room before you came in and found its mate. Show it to him, Bill. Here it is. Red, it's key still, Lucky. It is a frame-up. You can't prove you found that in my room. Oh, yes, I can. Bill came in with me, and he can witness it. Yep. We found it about an hour ago. You're both under arrest for breaking into Pete's cabin and attempted fraud. But, but how did you find that mitten? Well, a mongrel pup named Mabel found it. But uh, you'll find out about that later. I'm taking you two to jail. And when you're safely locked up, King and I are going to take Mabel a bone for saving us a lot of hard work. Yes, thanks to King and Mabel, this case is closed. <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all characters, names, and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. L. Prow speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Have you ever wanted to witness a murder trial? Well, for the same atmosphere and effect, listen to Famous Jury Trials when it's on the air every Saturday night over most of these ABC stations. You'll hear tense courtroom scenes, cross-examination of witnesses, dramatic testimonies, the judge's charge to the jury as the case moves quickly to an exciting and often surprising climax. To aid the actors feel their roles and to bring an air of authenticity to scenes viewed by the studio audience, famous jury trials is enacted in costume and scenery, and the full atmosphere of the courtroom is conveyed by gasps of amazement, the mutterings of anger, and other emotional outbursts on the part of the trial spectators. To heighten the dramatic effect of the show, the action leading up to the crime is reenacted. Be sure to be a member of the listening jury when Famous Jury Trials is brought.